From the studios of Media Training Worldwide in New York, this is Inside Communications, and I'm your host, Mike Bago. What's it like to work on a campaign so successful that your client almost runs out of product? Almost. Today we go inside the campaign for the super successful brand, Shellac, on Inside Communications with Red PR's Julia Labaton, coming up next. Thanks for joining us today on Inside Communications. When you're launching a product like Shellac, how important is it to get influencers and trade publication writers, editors on board with something like this? I think it's critical to get the influencers first. That was the key to our whole strategy, was to start with the innovators who influence the an influence and influence to create a domino effect. So we had a very targeted laser-like strategy to look at the innovators in each category of our target audiences. We wanted who are the most influential media, who are the most influential nail professionals who influence the industry and who um, might work on celebrities so that we can get influential celebrity fans who will then influence the media um, and who are influential consumers in different communities around the country and around the world. How important are bloggers and people that write about fashion that don't, don't necessarily write for Allure or any of those major women's magazines, but write a blog that people frequent because they trust what they have to say? Some of the bloggers are so influential. I mean, the blog sphere, as we all know, is expanding by the minute. And some of the bloggers, they were some of our key targets in the very beginning, um, in particular a blog called Odd Lacquered Up that writes only about nail polish and everything nails and has a huge following of fans um, and incredible um, credibility when, sh when the writer covers a product People are listening, they believe her reviews, and it, we immediately see results. In terms of seeing results and having people try that product, we're talking about global events. We're talking about events in New York, Los Angeles, internationally. How important is it to actually have the editors, the people that are going to be writing about it, actually going in and getting the treatments done? You can't launch a product like Shellac without having people try it. Um, our strategy was to get the innovators trying it um, through a whole series of events starting two months before it launched in the marketplace through to now a year and a half later. We're trying to, you know, shellac as many women as possible and even some men are trying it. Um, you have to try it to believe it and, you know, once you shellac you don't go back. And so many people have tried it that there was almost too much demand for the actual product. It, it outstripped by 14 times what the initial estimation was that people were going to be using it. Yes. Was that a crisis communication moment in a way where something can get too popular that there's not enough supply for it? It was, Mike. We had, it was incredible. It was, working on the launch of shellac has been like working on the launch of the iPad. We, um, it launched to, into the marketplace in May and by July, um, CND, which is a global company, they had sold out of a year's worth of global supply within several months because of, in a large part because of the media coverage. We had the New York Times, the Today Show twice. We had it on the homepage of Yahoo, which shut down their website. Um, and it caused such an incredible demand that nail professionals were running out to get it and it sold out fat, even with the projections, knowing that it was going to be a big success, even with those projections, it, it had a runaway success. Um, and Is, then we did, have, we did have a little bit of a, we did go into crisis mode um, and we really took advantage of social media and CND's network of nail professionals around the world, so we were monitoring um, what was being said on Facebook and in different chat rooms, you know, 24-7 and responding right away. We had the CEO and the president of um, 
C and D calling people directly after they post. So it wasn't just the anonymous, nameless face calling someone up or randomly tweeting them. You actually had the heavy hitters coming in to show that this was a priority for them. We did. We had the co-founder of C and D, who's very well known in the industry and um, on TV and quoted a lot, calling up saying, I, "I saw what you wrote on Facebook, and I'm sorry you're so upset. We're glad you love the product, and you know we're we're trying our best to get it." to you as fast as we can. And it really made a difference. There certainly is a love of the product. Is there any danger in it becoming almost too popular that nail salons, have you gotten any feedback from them in terms of saying, we don't like the fact that customers are only going to be coming back to us every three weeks instead of every week, or it's going to last too long? Could the product be too good in a way? Actually, the response has been the reverse. Salons, um, cnd has been getting feedback from salon owners saying, Thank you so much. My business has skyrocketed because of shellac. I'm able to see, you know, three times the number of clients that I was before, mm -hmm. and I charge more. Um, so for the salon, it's a business driver. For the woman who's going in to get a service, it's a huge convenience and, in the end, a, a money saver because oh, you don't have to go back to the salon every week. You can go back every two or three weeks. You don't have to worry about it in between. Um, so you save that time and you save the money. And so we've had. Um, Salons, actually a salon here in New York, not far from here. The uh, woman said to me, she said, my rent's gone up so high, I was thinking of going out of business, but thanks to shellac, uh, my business is now booming and I'm not closing my doors. So business was booming for shellac for these nail salons. How about post-launch now? What are some of the steps that are going to be taken to continue this ball rolling, to continue mm. to get the word out to women and to men, as you yeah. mentioned? We'll get back to the men in a little <laughs> bit and see, and see what a market that is for them. But how about post-launch in terms of continuing this momentum? We are actually, as we were just talking about, we just did a flash mob in New York City during Fashion Week. We've been trying to um, ensure that anyone who hasn't tried it yet is getting the opportunity to try it. We've got a mobile manicure van traveling around the city, now traveling to other cities. Um, and there are new colors launching every six months. And training is going. CND has now instituted a salon certification program so that if a person goes into a salon, they know they're getting the real deal. There's mm -hmm. a lot of now copycats saying they're, it's almost become like a verb or a noun, like Q tip or Kleenex is synonymous with a certain type of product. Now people are um, thinking that sometimes that they're getting a shellac manicure mm -hmm. and getting a gel manicure, which is very different. Mm -hmm. So there's a big education process now to make sure you know what to, the consumer knows what to look for and the salon um, the salons that are offering it properly um, are shellac certified and and how important is it to have that shellac certification some salons have the actual sticker that they have mm -hmm. shellac at that salon is there going to be a social media campaign? Is there going to be media outreach to inform individuals that watch this interview, that watch the Today Show or any other magazine, to say, watch what you get? It might not be the real thing, almost akin to going down to Chinatown and getting a fake Louis right. Vuitton bag. It's true. There is. We're in the process of um, that media initiative right now in terms of education, clarification, and um, differentiating. I mean, when shellac first came out, it was the first in the marketplace of a new category, a hybrid category, a power polish, which didn't exist before. People knew polish and people knew gels, but they didn't, this didn't, this technology is completely new. So um, there's definitely a learning curve of um, educating people about what to look for and what the differences are, and that's we're um, using social media and traditional media now to get that. Let's go out. inside some of that media coverage and in terms of introducing people to this new product. Virtually every media hit that I saw preparing for this had the reporter, had the host rummaging through their bag right after, banging their hand on a desk to actually show what a great product it is, how mm -hmm. durable it is right after the fact. For this product, for any product, anyone watching this in the PR field, how important is it to actually get people to road test your product, to actually show it in use? I think you can't launch a product like this without doing that. Um, otherwise, it's just words and, and it's not credible. So our mission was to say to reporters, road test this. Take the 14-day challenge. See how your you know, polish wears or wear polish on one hand and shellac power <laughs> polish on the other hand and show us what it looks like in 14 days. And we had reporters all across the country take that challenge. Um, 
uh, and it worked. It got rave reviews. I mean, it's a product that stands up to what it does, uh, which is definitely a PR person's dream. Getting people to try it was critical. We started out with the New York Times. We went to them th uh, three months before we launched and said to the reporter, look, we've got something that's really going to make a difference in women's lives. Do you want to try it? She road tested it, and the first article came out, and that was the domino effect. Um, you know, the New York Times is the ultimate news media source. From that, we had um, the Today Show road tested, actually twice. They did two segments on it. And then um, Yahoo, a reporter for Yahoo, road tested it. And um, a very, very important nail polish blogger that has a lot of credibility within the media um, road tested it. And from there, those, those key um, traditional social and broadcast media outlets um, really set the course for local news and print broadcast, um, print, sorry, and local broadcast stations road testing it themselves to see if the, if it stood up to the test. It stood up to the test certainly for women making it so popular. You mentioned men just a minute ago. Is that a secondary market that more and more people, are, that men are getting this service? Is it, is there different techniques that you use to introduce it to them or is it just their wives and girlfriends saying hey you know what this is great for me yes. you're getting it too you know I mentioned men because we did a shellac manicure van in New York uh, last week during fashion week and we had a number of shellac manicure bars during fashion night out and at every event I saw men sitting at the manicure bar getting shellac and I was rather surprised um, it's you know it's a not a major market for shellac but um, there are a lot of men who get manicures. They love, you know, it's like going to get a shave and a facial and a manicure. I mean, it does keep your hands looking groomed and nice. You don't have to have the high shine right. if you don't like, but it will definitely. Um, we also find actually guitar players like it. Oh, because certainly. It's protective. Yeah. <laughs> what lessons, wrapping up, what lessons did you learn from this that you could take into other campaigns in terms of just the launch techniques, the post launch, the dealing with that crisis, communications, using social media? Are those lessons that you could take into future campaigns and future clients? Yes. I think there are two main lessons. One is the idea of innovation diffusion. I mean, in you want you need to diffuse it's really the core philosophy of public relations diffuse the message through the media but who are the most innovative and influential media and um, audiences that you need to influence first if you get to those key audiences first it's going to help do the rest of your job. For example, we went to not just influential media, but influential nail professionals who work with celebrities. Mm -hmm. From that, we had Rihanna and Katy Perry and JLo all become known fans of shellac, which then got us into People Magazine and a number of other media outlets. Um, so choosing who your innovators are first to diffuse the message is important. And we really saw that theory come to life vividly with this launch. And secondly, um, a lesson that you can never uh, take for granted is the internet has no boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, when C&D did a training in the Netherlands for shellac and the timing was different than the launch in the United States, a blogger in the Netherlands mentioned it long before our media strategy was going into effect. So we need to, needed to uh, react immediately to get, make sure that it wasn't you know, going to impair this very well-crafted strategy that we had put together. And it was actually a nail polish blogger who we have a good relationship with us with who pointed it out to us. So um, never take for granted your media strategy being domestic versus international. You have to think. Um, without boundaries. Wonderful advice and thanks for going inside communications with us today. Thanks Mike.